Uh, we would like now to <coughs> give an opportunity to Coach Sweeney to make an opening comment. They tell me I should tell you to make it fairly short. Okay. Is that anything? But you make your opening comment, and then we'll take questions. All right. Uh, well, we're just, I'm just thankful that uh, we got the opportunity to be up here because uh, that means that we, we won the game. We achieved our goal. <clears throat> I'm really proud of our team and our staff. Um, just, just an amazing performance, uh, dominant performance. Uh, obviously, we've had some adversity, but uh, these guys stepped up and, and did, a, did an awesome job. Um, I want to congratulate Notre Dame on a phenomenal year. Uh, they had a great year and a heck of a football team, uh, for sure. And uh, <clears throat> certainly, I know they're disappointed, but, but a very well coached team and, and, and nothing uh, to be uh, down about. Those guys have got it going in the right direction there. But uh, just proud of our guys uh, for the grit and toughness and heart they played with. And I want to say thanks to the Cotton Bowl folks. We've had an amazing week here. The, the, the hospitality has been incredible uh, from the hotel to the police officers, everybody. So we just appreciate everybody's effort uh, to make it a great week for us. And, and then I want to thank our fans. They were awesome tonight. I mean, it was an amazing crowd. And uh, the energy from our fans was, was tremendous. But at the end of the day, it's about these guys, and uh, we got a freshman and a senior. Uh, our seniors, you know, what can you say? They got their 54th win tonight. Uh, I mean, it's just the leadership is special. And then Trevor, um, him and number eight got it going early. That was the spark that we needed, and, and uh, the big plays were definitely the difference in the game. Uh, Notre Dame came into this game hardly giving up any big plays, and, and we were one of the leaders in the country in big plays. So. Um, they're really proud of Trevor and his poise and how he managed the game um, the whole way through. So, phenomenal night. We're going to celebrate this tonight, and uh, we're going to load up and get back to Clemson and, and get ready to go to California. <clears throat> okay, Coach, thank you for your comments. Before we take any questions for our student athletes, I'd like to introduce Carl Ice, the chairman of the Cotton Bowl Athletic Association, who is going to present the Outstanding Player Trophies the recipient of the Sanford Trophy as the outstanding offensive player is Trevor Lawrence of Clemson, quarterback freshman from Cartersville, Georgia. Congratulations. Good job, Trevor. Yeah, you need to get up there for a while. Right. Here, I'll, I'll step up again. I think I'll work too long. There we go. Good job, Trevor. Thank you. Okay, and for our recipient of the McKnight Trophy as the outstanding defensive player, is Austin Bryant of Clemson, a defensive end, and a senior from Provo, Georgia. Good job, A.B. Congratulations. Good job, A.B. Okay, now we'll take questions for our student athletes, please. If we've got a question on the side, right, and then we'll go towards the back. Uh, Trevor Groves, CUTigers.com. It seemed like you were really attacking the middle of the field tonight. Was that something that you were reacting to what Notre Dame's defense was doing, or, or was that uh, something that you, you caught on film in your preparation? Um, I mean, a little bit of both. They, they did a good job um, giving us some different looks than we kind of expected just because they had a bunch of time to prepare. But uh, I feel like we made, we made adjustments well and just kind of saw that soft spot and, and took advantage of it. We got a question on the left side in the middle aisle, three quarters of the way back. Trevor, you're up nine to three. You get the ball back with a little under five minutes left in the half. Um, are you thinking you can score twice at that point? What's the uh, what's the objective there? No, just, just wanting to score every time we get the ball. So I mean, uh, what we're really thinking about the next drive at that point, just trying to score on that drive. But uh, no, it was awesome. We were able to put it in on that drive and then get the ball back. Defense played played great and gave us another chance at the end of the half. On the outside right, about halfway back, standing up. Austin, uh, Phil Woodall, 806 Sports Radio in Amarillo, Texas. All the pregame talk was about missing Dexter Lawrence. I know you miss him as a teammate, but it looked like you didn't miss him at all on your defense all night. <laughs> yeah, um, those guys that stepped up, Albert, uh, Jordan, Niles, they did a phenomenal job. 
Um, it was a next man up mentality. Of course, we miss Dex. He's a great player and a great personality to have on your defense uh, when times get tough. Uh, but those guys stepped in and did an awesome job, and I'm just really proud of them and proud of Dex for you know uh, cheering them on and being there for them whenever they needed uh, someone to lean on. So um, we all came together and uh, played our hardest, and uh, just thankful for the opportunity. On the center aisle, about halfway back on the right side. Trevor, uh, Pat Forty from Yahoo Sports. Just wondering what the uh, luxury is or advantage is to throw to a bunch of 6'4 guys and the plays they can make. Uh, there, there's a lot of them. Uh, you know, you saw tonight, it's just those guys. Those guys are unbelievable. I mean, really just everybody on the offense, offensive line, receivers, running backs, everybody. But, uh, you know, they made, they made a lot of plays. Just throw it in their area and, and they'll come down with it. So they did, they did an awesome job and it's just, you know, it just shows uh, how good those guys are. Question on the inside in the middle right. Austin, Chris Heidel from Hubbard Time Radio in Baltimore. Just talk about how you control the Irish running game because they had that Williams guy who ran pretty well against Syracuse. What did you guys do to control him? Oh, well, going into the game, we knew that we were going to have to stop the run. They have a great offensive line. Got some great running backs <coughs> that can make stuff happen. Uh, we had a great plan. Uh, we prepared well and put the work in throughout the time that we have prepared for this game. And I think it really showed tonight by us being able to kind of dominate in the run game. So um, I think it just goes to show that the work that we put in. Coach V gave us a great plan, a uh, phenomenal plan, and uh, it worked tonight. So uh, just grateful that, you know, he put us in position to make plays. Question on the right-hand side, standing up. Uh, Ralph Russo with the AP. Trevor, um, what is it about you, what is it about this team that has allowed you to flourish as a 10, I think this is start number 10, and that this moment was not too big for you at all? <clears throat> I mean, you said it's, it's just about this team. You know, it's, it makes it a lot easier on me when you have guys all around you that are just, that are just great players and, and, and take that load off of you. So, you know, there's just there's not much pressure when you when you have guys that's good playing around you. So, you know, just that and the coaches help me a ton, just helping me prepare and, and uh, getting me ready for all these situations have, has been has been really good. All the way towards the rear on the right hand side. Hey, uh, Austin, um, the the fumble on the kickoff, kind of a sudden change. You guys are getting ready to go back out there, and then they overturn it. Was there? Can you describe the I don't know, sense of relief or, or what was the sense on the defense at that point? Um, yeah, it was definitely a sense of relief, but we were ready to play. We practiced that all the time, sudden change. So if we had to go out there and play, we would have been ready. Uh, they looked at it and overturned it, so we didn't have to go back out there. But um, we were definitely prepared. Uh, we loved to play, and it was just another opportunity for us to go out there and play and have fun. So um, it's just about how you perceive things and how you look at it. And, uh, you know, thankfully they did overturn it. Further questions for our student athletes? Got a question on the outside, right? Trevor, I just want to ask you, when Julian Love goes out of the game, how quickly do you guys identify that and then, then try to go to work on his replacement? Um, I can't. Probably probably the series or like after we came out that series, we, we noticed that he, he didn't come back out there after a few uh, plays that he came out. We, we didn't know if he was hurt for sure. And then he stayed out for a while. So I, uh, I'm not sure if he was injured or what happened. I know he came back in the second half, but I mean, we – we identified that, but I mean, didn't didn't change much. We we still we still attacked them in, in in the ways we thought were best. So um, obviously he's a great player, and um, a bunch of guys on that defense are great players. But yeah, I mean, didn't change much for us. Anything further for our student athletes? One more time. Anything for the student athletes? Okay, guys, we're gonna let, release you. You can go back to the locker room. Congratulations on a big game, and good luck next week. We're going to give them a second to get off the stage. Yeah, be sure and get <coughs> Okay, we'll start on the right-hand side, standing up. Morgan. Dabo, Ralph Russo, AP. Um, so when you hand Trevor the job, I know hand, but when he earns the job in September, do you envision not just him leading the team, but being sort of the focal point of the team in a playoff win? I. I I mean, I, to be totally honest with you, all I envisioned was him starting that next week um, against Syracuse. I thought he had earned that opportunity. I didn't have any vision beyond that. Uh, I really didn't. I'm a, I'm a week to week guy, um, but obviously the situation uh, changed. And um, but I just think he's gotten better and better all year long. Uh, but I, I definitely envisioned 
him being a, a great player. There's no qu question about that. That's why we recruited him. I saw that back in the spring. Um, in, and after four games, I, I felt like he deserved to go start. And he gave us the best chance to win and play at an explosive level. Um, but he had great understanding and command of what we were doing. So uh, my vision was for him to lead us that next week. And then when chain, things changed, well, OK, well, now we see what he does for the, for the rest of the year. And um, he just has done an incredible job. Streeter's done a wonderful job with him as well. But he's, got, he's just so poised. And uh, you know, he's 6'6". Six, six. I mean, he just sees it. And then he's got a gift of an arm. Um, but I just love his humility and, and how consistent he is with his demeanor and his preparation day in and day out. Easy, easy, easy guy to coach. And uh, easy guy to get behind and support. His teammates love him. <clears throat> Question on the aisle right side, and then we'll move into the center aisle. Yeah, well, I don't have the exact number in front of me, but I think in your semifinal wins, you guys have beaten teams by a score of like 100 to 20 or something roughly like that. And a lopsided game isn't that rare in these semifinal games. Why do you think the semifinals end up being lopsided more often than not? I don't know. We got our butts beat last year. Uh, so, um, you know, I'm just thankful that we got back and we had a better result tonight. But, you know, we <clears> – <throat> I don't know. I mean, we, we played well. Um, it's all about these four quarters. And I think our guys understand. We believe in how we prepare. We, we believe in, in, in kind of, you know, our, our system as far as how we get ready for these type of games. But we make every game the biggest game of the year. We really do. And so when you get to these moments, it's just kind of another game. You know, our our Friday is we try to we try to create as much routine as and obviously the when you're playing in these type the margin for error is not very big, but we go into every week with that mindset. We really do, and and that's the, probably the best thing I could say. And then I think how we practice, how we practice, what we practice against, our structure, our daily structure, um, prepares us for this moment. You know, I always tell them we're built for this. I mean, we're built for this um, by how we train, um, how, we, how, our, how we run our program from January to, to this point. It doesn't start in August. It's everything is a part of that, to answer your question. But, um, you know, certainly our experience, too, you know, is, is definitely a great teacher. Um, and, um, you know, we got a very veteran group. But, you know, they, they, um, the biggest thing, if you look over the last eight years of our program, I just think the consistency in these type of games has come from just the culture of our program and just our daily focus and how we go about on a weekly basis. And uh, and then again, how we practice. Question on the outside, right? <clears throat> Coach Phil Woodall, 806 Sports Radio in Amarillo, Texas. Talk about uh, the game plan that defensive coordinator Venables put together for you, yep. especially w with the absence of Dexter Lawrence, because it didn't look like he missed much uh, out there. With no, uh, I mean we had we had six sacks, which, which I believe is a bowl record, and uh, uh, you know that we held him 88 yards rushing. You know, so we the big thing for us was we, were gonna, we you can't stop the run, you ain't winning these games. It's just that simple. And uh, you know we we were able to get they popped a couple. Uh, they had the first play actually was a little cutback on us, but. But uh, we really settled in and we played well. I thought Albert Huggins did a great job. Uh, Albert's, a, you know, we, we're, we've got good depth and we went into it. Uh, we didn't change anything. Uh, we're, you know, I didn't even tell Brent. Brent had no idea um, that we weren't going to have Dexter until uh, Sunday when we got on the plane. I told him. Uh, I didn't want to ruin anybody's Christmas because uh, everybody, everybody, I found out Thursday and I didn't tell anybody until Sunday because I knew what I was dealing with Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I didn't want to I didn't want to put that on my staff. I wanted them to just enjoy their time with their families and, and have a couple days off there. But uh, nobody flinched. You know, we're confident in Albert, confident in Niles, confident in Jordan. And Dexter did a great job of kind of putting on a coaching hat and, and being a being a great teammate. Uh, but we we pressured the quarterback. You know, we didn't do a good job early. You know, he's a slippery guy, man. And um, we took some of the easy stuff away. They were, they were really quick passing game, short passing game, a lot of screens. Uh, everything's built off the run. And we took that stuff away and made him hold the ball. Um, and, you know, but he, he still popped some on us. You know, up the middle, we didn't do a good job. But we finally kind of settled in, choked our rush down a little bit, and were able to contain him. 
and uh, and get some pressure on him. So uh, the interception in the second half was a big play for us. They had good field position right there, and Nolan Turner's play was huge. But uh, just you know, Brent and our staff, they do an amazing job. And our secondary, you know, everybody, everybody, you know, our, our secondary has been reading for for three weeks how terrible they are. Uh, I mean, good lord, we 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 have one you know subpar game that you win by three touchdowns, and now all of a sudden our secondary is terrible. And um, I thought they were ready, played well. You know, we they took ownership of the plan. We lined up properly, corrected some of the mistakes uh, that we had. Um, uh, you know, earlier in the year. Question on the aisle, on the <clears throat> middle. Dabo Pep, 40 from Yahoo Sports. You said you have a veteran group, but all of your playmakers other than ancient Hunter Renfro <clears throat> were freshmen and sophomores tonight. How are they so ready to contribute at such a young age? Well, uh, Justin Ross is, is just, I mean, he's a special talent. And uh, that's why he was one of the top receivers in the country. He's big, he's strong, he's confident. And uh, you know he's he's well prepared. You know he's he's one of those guys that 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 loves to be coached. And for a young player to make an impact, it takes a certain level of maturity. And and he's got that. And Trevor's the same way. You know physically just beyond what a normal freshman would be. Uh, both of those guys. Um, and uh, <clears throat> just gifted mentally and physically. So that's the biggest thing. And again, their buy-in, their, their maturity, their love to be coached and how they prepare. Um, so I th again, I thought, I thought Justin Ross was the early spark. I mean, what a, I think he set a, a bowl record for Clemson uh, with yards per catch. Uh, amazing, you know, what he did, 24 something yards a catch and a couple touchdowns. Uh, but I, our playmakers all stepped up. But we're, we're, an, we're a fun team because we've got this great veteran leadership you know, with Renfro and, and the Mitch Hyatts and that group. And then you just got this energy and enthusiasm and eagerness from some of these young guys like Xavier Thomas, Trevor, uh, you know, even Lynn Jay, even Travis. Travis is just a sophomore. Uh, T. Higgins is just a sophomore. Uh, so it's a lot of fun uh, to see these guys go out there and compete. Outside right. As you were preparing for this game, did you feel like, I mean, obviously you played better than Notre Dame tonight. Did you feel like you had four touchdowns more talent than Notre Dame? Like just in terms of the raw material, did you feel like there was a big gap in this one? Uh, I, I didn't think any in any terms of, of a gap or anything. All I thought about was um, what we had to do to win the game. I felt like that we were good enough to win, but I, there was no doubt in my mind Notre Dame was good enough to beat us. We were going to have to play well, and uh, we played well. I, you know, they're a stingy defense. I think they were one of the t top ten scoring defenses in the country, not giving up many points. Hardly ever give up big plays. Uh, big plays were a rarity. I think they had only given up maybe two 40-yard plays all year. Of two or three, is that what it was? And, and we had – I know we had at least two tonight. Um, but they're just, they're just really well coached. And um, I didn't have any, you know – margin of victory in my mind. I just, I, I, we, our team had a tremendous amount of respect for Notre Dame. This is the best team we've played, the best front we've played. I think their secondary is really good. Those backs are, I mean, really good. Those big old receivers they got. I thought they were as complete a team as we've seen. Um, but, you know, we, we, we won the turnover margin. We won the big play margin. And uh, we finally got the running game going a little bit to support it. And then defensively, I thought we, we, just, we just won in the trenches. Simple as that. And so that's, you know, and in these type of games, you know, all of a sudden the momentum uh, can get rolling against you and, and it can, you know, you pop a cup. The 48 seconds with one timeout, that score I thought was critical. That was a huge, huge score right there. Um, but, no, we're, we're – we're we're not I don't whatever thirty to three we're we're we play that game ten times I mean Notre Dame's going to battle us uh, every single time it just that's the way it was tonight and uh, but Notre Dame's a heck of a football team on the aisle right Coach Trevor Grove CU Tigers dot com it was tough sledding there for Travis in the first half um, they're playing with their safeties in a lot uh, but did you just have the feeling that it was only a matter of time before he broke a big one and and that sixty two yard touchdown run. Uh, tied him for the nation's lead in touchdowns and also broke Wayne Gallman's yeah. uh, single season rushing record. How special was that for him? Yeah, it was awesome. So, we, yeah, we, we broke the, the, the rushing record for our team, and he broke the single season rushing record. Uh, but, yeah, you, you just – you've got to stay patient. 
you know, I thought he was a little impatient early. He, he, he bounced a couple of things that we needed him to, 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 to not bounce. Um, but you keep giving that ball to number nine. Uh, if you give him 15 touches or more, something good's going to happen. And uh, simple as that. And we, we, he was close on a couple of them where the safety was the unblocked guy that, that got him down. But on that third and one there, <clears throat> man, he just popped it and he was gone. But that's what he can do. And that's why you just, let, you just make sure he gets enough touches and you don't give up on it. You stay patient. And I thought, I thought our guys did a good job because we didn't, we, I think he had 17 yards at the half. We, didn't, we did not run the ball well. Uh, but I thought Trevor kind of sparked us a little bit. You know, we had a lot of RPOs where they were giving us things and keeping the ball out of Travis's hands. And then they were giving us some quarterback run, which we took. Uh, so, so they, their plan was to, you know, try to, you know, bend but not break and, and try not to give up some of the big plays. Some of the big plays we got were two safeties, deep coverage. We just made plays, you know, over the middle and, uh, and took what was there. And, and it wasn't like – and then we had a couple where they were manned up and, you know, the one before the half they played, you know, one-on-one -on -one and we, our guy made a play. But they played a lot of coverage uh, as well. And uh, we just made the big plays. But it was good to see Travis get going. And we just hung in there with him. We told him at halftime, hey, we're going to stick with it. Uh, we're going to pop one. And so for him to finish with 109 yards <laughs> at 17 at the half, I think uh, that's all you need to know about that guy. Just, just keep getting him the ball. This is going to be the final question for Coach on the left side, second row. Hannah Rogerson with SB Nation Radio. You, Nolan Turner, had his first career interception today. And you promised his dad you would look after him. On the field just now, he told me that he looks at you as a dad figure, as a father figure. What does that mean to you just to nurture him in a way that his dad wasn't able to throughout his college career? Yeah, well, um, you know, it's a blessing that uh, the good Lord's given me that opportunity. And, you know, I know um, uh, KT, uh, you know, he may not be here in the flesh, but I know he's here in the spirit. Uh, there's no doubt, and I know he's, he's, uh, he's bouncing around heaven tonight for sure. Uh, proud of Nolan, but... You know, not bad for an old guy that nobody wanted. You know, uh, he, he, he's, just a, he's just a raggedy old guy from Vestavia that nobody wanted uh, except us. And, man, he's a heck of a player. I mean, he's just a sophomore and, I mean, a really good football player. Made another great play uh, battling to get the ball out. And yeah, he's got a bright future. But every time I look at him, I, I feel like I'm back in 1989 uh, all over again because he's a spitting image of his dad. But, you know, I'm just thankful that uh, the good Lord's given me the opportunity to be a part of his life and, and to help, um, you know, fulfill uh, my promise to KT. And um, I'm just so proud of him. I mean, what he's doing on and off the field, the young man that he, that he is, the brother that he is to his, his sister and, and, and little brother, um, and the team that he is, and the football player he's developed into. It's so, so cool for me. Uh, so that was an awesome, awesome moment. Uh, to see him make that play. Okay, Coach, congratulations on okay. the win and best of luck next Thank week. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Now, Coach, you can have your coat. All right, you have my coat. Sorry about I'm out of jail, huh? You're out of jail. Right. Sorry about that.